Hello. Welcome to this webinar about avoiding Kubernetes security risks with hardening best practices. I'm Henry Coggill, um, Product Manager for Security Certifications here at Canonical. And today I'm delighted to be joined by two uh, excellent speakers. Uh, we have Alex Jones, who is the Director of Kubernetes Engineering at Canonical, and uh, Lech Sandesky, who's the Product Manager for Ubuntu Pro. So let's have a quick look at the agenda for today. Um, firstly, we'll cover what hardening is all about, what the principles are and where they apply. Uh, then we'll touch on the CIS benchmarks, which are industry standard guidelines for hardening, uh, before mentioning how the benchmarks can be automatically applied with the Ubuntu security guide. Then Alex will cover Kubernetes best practices, talking about microcates and charm Kubernetes, uh, what security capabilities these deployments enable, um, before discussing security add-on components, including Trivi and Kubescape, um, and how these can reduce your security risks. Then Lech will cover how Ubuntu Pro underpins the security of the whole application stack uh, with security maintenance guarantees for all the open source software that you need. Um, we'll finish up with some, uh, some Q&A, um, but if you have any questions as we go, please put them into the live questions section. Um, which you can find um, under the uh, the platform links, um, and we can pick them up um, as we go and do the best we as we can to answer them. Um, also, we've put some links and useful resources into the attachment section, uh, which is the icon with a little paper clip next to it. So, so what's what's hardening all about? Um, well, with the ever-present threats of ransomware and data breaches these days, um, it's imperative to lock systems down to prevent attackers from gaining a foothold. Um, so hardening a system means reducing its attack surface and implementing defense in depth, such that even if a weakness is found, um, it doesn't lead to a full system compromise. Um, I mean, this is relevant for all production systems and applications that handle customer data and sensitive workloads. Some industries, you know, such as the financial sector, have their own specific compliance guidelines like PCI DSS, which is designed to you know, specifically protect credit card and debit card data. Um, but these security hardening principles apply to any industry. Um, you know, if you're running a production system, you probably want to harden it. So each layer of the, uh, of, of the stack needs to be addressed. Um, to make, to make it production ready and battle hardened. Um, because even if you had the most securely configured installation of Kubernetes, um, it could com be completely undermined if an attacker can get a root shell on a server in the cluster, um, which means you need to address all the different layers of the, of, of the stack. If you're using a cloud instance, then some of these steps should have been addressed by the cloud provider. Um, but if you have your own hardware, then um, some of the, the, the steps to take are um, updating the BIOS, um, because manufacturers frequently release new BIOS versions to address security issues. Um, and it's very important to keep on top of these updates to the latest versions, um, which also often covers remote management interfaces, um, which um, offer a great deal of functionality um, outside of the regular operating system. Um, enabling secure boot, um, this is um, using digital signatures to ensure that the system boots genuine signed code um, and means that it's harder for an attacker to um, subvert the boot process if they have physical access to the server. Um, some other, um, other hardening options for the, the servers include setting BIOS and remote management passwords because features such as secure boot can be disabled in the BIOS, um, so you can set a password to prevent the tampering. Um, this also applies to the remote management interfaces um, because yeah, they, they offer a wealth of low-level system access, um, which should be locked down to trusted management subnets only um, and password protected. Um, and the most important thing is um, configuring disks with full disk encryption. Um, disk encryption doesn't need to slow you down either. Um, modern processes all have uh, hardware AES instructions, um, and so disk encryption can run at... Uh, at, at, at full native speeds. Um, when it comes to the operating system, this is where you have the, uh, the most options for hardening it. Um, you know, if you in, install a Linux system, um, 
it comes configured for a whole variety of applications. We, you know, you don't know whether it's going to be used for development or for production environments or for just tinkering in your home lab. Um, and so um, the, the default options need to be um, need to be hardened. So the first step is to remove unnecessary and unused components from the system. Um, you know, Linux particularly offers a, a huge number of packages to cover, you know, a, a variety of use cases. Um, but it's likely that the production system will only have a, a small number of critical workloads, um, and any package not supporting these workloads um, should be removed. Um, likewise, uh, any default settings um, such as file system options, um, so taking read-write privileges away from directories and configuring systems to only allow access to the specific files that you need. Um, this can also be enforced with um, App Armor or SE Linux, which are mandatory access control frameworks, um, which specifically limit the uh, the privileges that a particular application can have. Um, one of the very important steps about um, hardening any system is to configure logging and integrity checks. So any system and, and application logs need to be stored on a remote server uh, to ensure that in the event of a hack, the attacker can't then delete the logs to cover their tracks. Um, you know, this is a, a critical um, step in, in forensic investigations is to go through the logs. So all applications need to be generating logs. You know, Kubernetes generates a lot of logs. You need to store these offsite um, or away from the systems. Um, and likewise, file integrity monitoring. Um, any of these packages are available with most operating systems. Um, and you can uh, set up triggers to alert you if any critical files change, um, which could be indicative of uh, an attack in progress. And when it comes to software these days, um, it's absolutely imperative to keep software patched and up to date. The majority of system compromises occur because attackers exploit known vulnerabilities that have just not been patched. Um, so it's essential that all these patches are applied quickly and ideally automatically. Um, but Lech will talk a little bit more about that uh, about later. And then the application layer. Um, Obviously, Alex will cover some Kubernetes-specific hardening um, steps, but there are some general principles that apply to any application, um, particularly web applications. You know, it's vital to enforce strong encryption using TLS for web connections. Um, you can get certificates for free these days with Let's Encrypt, um, so there's no reason not to be able to to have strong encryption um, for all your connections. Um, and for any applications that users log into, you know, for administrators or users, um, reduce the privilege levels to the minimum required. Um, make sure that regular users don't have full admin access if they don't need it. And then when it comes to operational best practices, um, you know, any organization, users come and go, um, people change roles. Um, so user accounts need to be kept in sync with the uh, organizational changes. Um, you know, you check them regularly, audit the, the user accounts to make sure that um, accounts aren't lying around and people can't take advantage of them. Um, it's also a good idea to regularly scan for vulnerabilities. Um, you can use third-party scanning software, um, which can identify any weaknesses in the overall system, um, system integrity and look for uh, vulnerable configurations and out-of-date packages. Um, this is complementary to keeping the systems up to date. Um, getting a sort of a, a third-party perspective is um, is always reassuring. Um, so, I mean, I've mentioned a few sort of general principles here, um, but if you want some in-depth guides about how to harden the system, um, I can recommend the CIS benchmarks. Um, so these are published by the Center for Internet Security, which is an independent organization that publishes comprehensive hardening guidelines. Um, these guidelines are globally recognized um, and they're, they're industry-wide. Um, and they're, they're consensus driven by industry veterans and security professionals alike. Um, and there, there are benchmarks published for a range of operating systems, cloud platforms, application frameworks, including Kubernetes um, and other applications like web servers and databases. Um, these benchmarks are updated with the latest industry intelligence um, and they give you a comprehensive guide to hardening a system. Um, if you follow the CIS benchmarks, then um, that, that, that guarantees you a, a solid base to work on. Um, so the, the CIS benchmarks are an excellent starting point. Um, there are literally hundreds of rules in these benchmarks covering in detail all of the steps I mentioned previously about hardening system from top to bottom. Um, but it can be obviously quite a daunting and time consuming prospect to tackle this in your environment. Um, so for a uh, canonical 
um, provides the Ubuntu security guide, obviously for Ubuntu systems. Um, this is a tool which automates the implementation of the CIS benchmarks um, in one step, and it removes all the headaches of going through the hundreds of benchmark rules um, individually. Um, and then once the system has been locked down according to the CIS profile, um, you can then use the, the USG tool to audit the system and ensure that the changes haven't been reverted. Um, and you can use this to demonstrate to external auditors, for example, that your systems meet the uh, agreed hardening standards. Um, in addition to the CIS benchmarks, um, the Ubuntu Security Guide also has a profile for uh, DESA STIG, which is um, a similar hardening standard for the US Department of Defense. Um, and just to sort of show how easy it is to, to run, uh, you know, to harden your system like this um, for a stock Ubuntu um, LTS release, you can just install the USG um, with Ubuntu Pro. Um, and then just, you know, simple commands will uh, audit your system and then harden your system and fix all the issues. Um, I know there are bound to be questions about uh, when the Ubuntu Security Guide is coming out for Jammy, because obviously um, we haven't released it yet. It's been actively worked on and we are um, planning on releasing USG for Jammy um, with the 2304 release. So that is next month. Um, and with that, um, I think we can move on to talking about Kubernetes. So I will uh, hand over to Alex Jones. Thank you very much, Henry. Appreciate that. So we've had a high level look at um, the overview of the landscape in those initial slides. And I wanted to hone in on the Kubernetes specific parts of that. Um, but before we do that, let's just take a step back and look at the products that Canonical bring to the table and why I think they're interesting propositions for anybody who's looking to harden their security posture. So on the left, we have Microcates. Microcates is effectively a homegrown uh, Kubernetes, but it's fully CNCF uh, conformant. And you might know it from snap install Microcates, but it goes far beyond that these days. You know, it's available in your car, in your factory, in your cloud, running at high scale. What I think is very exciting about it in regards to this particular uh, conversation is that Microcates also is complementary uh, 